Hey, hello everyone, welcome to the channel. So, short video today before the next series. All this basically is, is a list of changes, additions, bug fixes that have all been implemented while the British series was going on. Just so these videos are as up to date as possible before moving on to a new nation. I've probably forgotten some stuff, but all the major gameplay impacting changes I've found are mentioned. There's also a quick rundown of which talismans I'd recommend and what I believe are the most effective lineups you can make for Britain too. So, let's get into it. Probably not going to be the most interesting video in the world, but as always, I really hope you enjoy. Starting off, the Valentine Mark I got a slight armour rework. The sides are now 5mm thinner, and the strip of armour on the roof that was heavily armoured has been removed. So, not a massive nerf, and it probably won't factor into gameplay too much. Next up is the 3 inch gun carrier, and it got a bit of a buff. It's now about 5km an hour faster, which does make a difference. It actively feels a bit more responsive, and it can trundle about the map a bit faster now, which is nice. Overall, decent change that makes the tank a bit less tedious to play. Next up, the bug with the Crusader AA Mark I side armour was also fixed. What was happening was the side armour was counted as structural steel, so it disappeared when turning the external armour slider off. It's since been corrected to RHA. Nice. Next up is a fix to the Conway's elevation. Like I brought up in the video, the elevation was corrected to historical standards. It doesn't elevate and depress as quickly now. So it is a nerf, but as it was unhistorical, it was a deserved change. Next are a couple of armour changes to the Scent 10. The extra armour sheet on its upper plate got a slight buff from 44 to 51mm, but its turret mantlet got a pretty big nerf from 200mm to 152 And because it's cast armour, the thickness is now effectively 143mm, which is really poor, really. This likely won't change too much in its overall performance, but it just means that some of the weaker tanks you'll fight will be able to go through the mantlet now, which is a shame. Although, the turret was always a weak spot, so its playstyle won't really have changed, you just need to be a bit more wary of certain tanks now. Next up is a collective nerf for a few vehicles. The Falcon, Warrior, Striker, Swingfire and Stormer can now be hull broken by 100 and 105mm heat rounds. This really does limit their survivability, as these rounds are very common at these tiers, so you'll need to be a little bit more careful when using these vehicles in the future than you would before. Next up are a couple of penetration changes. First off, the Swingfire missile gained 35mm penetration, and the Milan 1 lost 50mm penetration. Not massive changes, they'll still pen everything reliably pretty much, but in any case it is worth mentioning. Next up is the Striker, which very recently received a new ATGM, the Swingfire Mark II. It has 700mm of penetration against the regular 535mm, which is pretty decent. Its ballistics are the same, only difference is the pen. This doesn't change much as it could still reliably pen everything it fought anyway, but in any case, it can pen enemy vehicles a bit more consistently now at the higher tiers, which might make it a bit more viable for some higher tier lineups if you like the vehicle. Next up, all models of the Centurion got some extra internal armour separating the driver from the ammo. This will rarely make a noticeable change to survivability, but it might catch some shrapnel from time to time. The Centurion Mark III, STRV and Shot Carl also got some changes to the turret armour. It's now slightly weaker overall, but the bulge around the MG now is actually modelled and provides a fair bit of armour which is nice, but the turret face is noticeably a bit more vulnerable now. They didn't change the mantlet of the Carnarvon yet though, I imagine it's only been done with the Sense because they're currently working on Swedish tanks, and because they use Centurions they've updated the model and carried it over to the British as well. So some armour added and some taken away. Next change regards the Falcon and the Chieftain Marksman. Now if an incoming round hits the ammo belt of either of these vehicles, it will detonate and destroy the vehicle. Previously, the ammo would just be blacked out. This isn't too much of a nerf, as when this happened you'd be as good as dead anyway, as you'd have no ammo left. So, technically a nerf to survivability, but still a good change in terms of consistency. Another recent change is that the Conqueror, Chieftain Mark III and V no longer get ammo racked when the APDS warheads are hit in the turret, which is nice. APFSDS rounds on the Chief 10 and Challengers still explode though. And interestingly, the Conqueror has ambiguous rounds modelled in its turret, so they're not Sabo or Hesh, even though they look like Hesh. They don't currently explode anyway, but this could mean a rework of its ammo layout is coming soon? Dunno. A good change in any case. There have also been a couple of BR changes too. 
the Centurion Mark X and Vickers MBT have been raised from 7.0 to 7.3, and the Falcon as well has been down-tiered from 7.7 to 7.3. This makes a 7.3 lineup with the Conqueror a lot more viable now as it has a great and possibly even overpowered anti-air. This doesn't change much in terms of the Sent 10 and Vickers performance, as the 7.3 lineup is really where they should be used anyway, so it's not much of a negative for those two. Also, the Swing Fire has now been down-tiered to 7.7 .7 from 8.3, which really doesn't change anything. There's no lineup at 7.7 now, and it's not worth up-tiering anything to 7.7 to play with it. Changing the BR of this vehicle won't really help its performance at all. All it needs is to be able to depress the periscope so it can camp hills, and it'll be pretty useful. However, I don't know if this was possible in real life. If it wasn't, I guess it's always going to be a bit of a lost cause at this point. The last update saw the addition of a new premium tank for Tier 4, the Centurion Action X. I was initially going to do a big review on this tank, but as it's just so similar to the regular Centurion, and since I covered that vehicle recently and quite extensively, it'd be retreading too much of the same ground, so I'll do a mini review of it here instead. The Action X is fundamentally very, very similar to the Centurion Mark III. It uses the hull of the Sent 10 without the extra armor plate, and the turret is unique. It's similar to the FV4202's turret design, but it's not quite the same. And to be honest, it's actually fairly weak, arguably weaker than the regular turret on the Sent 3 and Carnarvon. The turret roof is fairly bouncy, and the armor around the gun is actually pretty good, but the sides and the bottom of the turret are very, very weak. Nothing at this tier, even the tier below, is going to struggle to pen the cheeks and the lower turret. All this really is on the surface is a more defensive Centurion Mark III. It has arguably better hull down performance, but in practice I haven't noticed anything exceptional about it. For 6,000 odd golden eagles, I don't really think this tank is worth it. I imagine they're only adding this now because they'll soon be removing the STRV-81 from the store. So, nothing impressive with this tank really, the tech tree variants are all better in their own way, so I would avoid this one. So, next up is the Quick Talisman Guide. I'll try not to spend too much time on this and just briefly mention the vehicles and why. I'm going to do this in two stages, talismans I really recommend and extra talismans. I've only included four in the main section here as they're still expensive and what I'm aiming for in this rundown is to highlight the best options for the most efficient progress while spending the least amount of money. So my four main picks are the Cromwell 1 at rank 2, the Comet 1 at rank 3, the Carnarvon at rank 4, and the Warrior at rank 6. All for the reason that these vehicles all work in an up tier and pretty much on all maps as well. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but the most important thing for a premium, or when considering a talisman, is picking a vehicle that's versatile. So the Churchill Mark 7, for example, can be a great vehicle and almost impenetrable when down tiered, but on a long range map and in up tiers, it's not really viable at all. Whereas all these four vehicles work universally well, pretty much. So, these are what I think are your best options across the board, as far as not spending too much money is concerned. For extra talismans, if you have a bit more money to spare, or if you simply like the look of these vehicles more, I'd still recommend the Sherman 2 at rank 2, the Avenger at rank 3, the Centurion Mark 3 at rank 4, the Vickers MBT at rank 5, and the Vickers Mark 7 at rank 6. All these vehicles are still good choices, but are either a bit irrelevant or aren't quite as viable as the vehicles in the first list. The Sherman 2 is an amazingly potent vehicle, but it does struggle a bit in up tiers. The Avenger is still good, but secondary to the Comet and how versatile it can be, and as tier 3 is still relatively low in the grand scheme of things, I wouldn't get two talismans for this tier. The Sent 3 is, again, a great vehicle, but secondary to the Carnarvon. The Vickers MBT has loads of potential, but as tier 5 is quite small, you'd be saving money by skipping a talisman here. And the Vickers Mark 7 is probably the most versatile tier 6, but a talisman here costs 2,600 golden eagles and it will get sucked up into top tier a lot overall. So, I'd say the Warrior is better suited for a talisman in tier 6, as it works consistently in up tiers and can fit into a lot of lineups as well, potentially. For premiums, ultimately I'd only really recommend the AC4 and maybe the Iron Duke if the price ever drops on the marketplace. Both are very capable and at decent silver line earning battle ratings. The higher tier premiums are all a bit irrelevant really. They're not bad at all per se, but you'd easily get more value out of talismans here. Just before we end with the lineups, scrolling on screen now are a lot more bug fixes I didn't mention earlier. Just because they're smaller issues and I don't want to drag this video out. There's even more that aren't on this list, but since the start of the British Tank series, all of these issues have been fixed by the internal team or the community reporting them. So big thanks to Templar on the forum and everyone else for fixing these issues. 
I just wanted to put into perspective just how many issues have been corrected, as it is a lot to be honest. And even though the forum doesn't quite have the best reputation and navigating it isn't always incredibly easy, reporting problems with the game is really important. So if you guys see something wrong and have the time, please pop in a report. As far as I know, Gaijin are working on a reward system for players who are constantly reporting bugs, so give it a go. I know there's a lot of hostility towards Gaijin in this regard, but things really do get done. Some faster than others, granted but we do all have the potential to help out, so consider it if you get the time. Call me a massive shill if you like, no one's making me say any of this. I just genuinely love the game and want it to improve. That's it. So there we are guys, finally at the end now. On the screen now are what I think in my opinion are the best lineups that you can make for the UK. Of course you can swap out some vehicles, different AA, different CAS aircraft, but this is what I personally use myself and what I've had the best results with. You can of course put your own spin on it, but this is what I'd recommend personally. So, for the next series, I think I know what I want to do, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, initially I was going to do one of the smaller nations, but thinking about it, I might as well do one of the bigger nations. Because, say for example, Russia, Germany, or America, most of the tree, apart from the high tier I guess, is effectively complete. Not in terms of that they've added everything they can possibly add, but nothing they add now will drastically change how the trees perform. Maybe Germany if they add some more armoured cars, but for Russia and America, it's largely finished, if you know what I mean. Like, obviously not completely, but yeah. Whereas if I did, say, Japan or France, there's still a lot of development they could potentially make. I don't know if they will, but if I leave those videos for... You know, maybe even a year down the line, they could look completely different, which is why I probably won't be focusing on one of the smaller nations. I know which one I want to do, but if you guys in the comments unanimously decide on a particular nation, uh, I'll probably do that one instead. I'm still going to try and do some premium reviews at some point, I just need to sort of find the right time and the right format that works, because you know, there's so many people doing them and I want them to be unique and interesting, so bear with. Anyway, that's probably all the rambling I can fit in today. So. Thank you all for watching the series, I really hope you've enjoyed it, and yeah, stay tuned for the next series, which hopefully should come quite soon. Thank you all very very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.